All right, so I'm out of Grey Whale Cove today. Sort of the end of the day here. I've got about two hours of sunlight left. Here is the scene I'm working with. I have painted this scene before in a smaller, uh, more rectangular format, but it's gonna be fun experimenting, trying to get a good composition out of a square. All right, so for the horizon, I'm gonna go about a third of the way down from the top, and I'm gonna include some land in the foreground here. And then there's the bushes, sort of like this. And then there's distant mountains, kind of come out like this. And I think that's gonna be the composition there. I do wanna have the plants uh, kind of coming up and intersecting the uh, water line here. In particular in this area, uh, maybe out here not so much. Something like that. I find it really challenging painting landscapes and seascapes on a square format and so it's kind of fun to challenge myself in this way feel like i'll learn some you know learn something and i'm painting on oil primed linen today and to be honest i don't really like this surface very much uh, in the past i haven't had much luck with it it's very absorbent i think it's only a single primed linen I'm not sure but I'm as I say I'm not crazy about uh, this surface to paint on I when I'm painting on canvas I like to use medium texture cotton duck but we'll see this could work out right now I'm just experimenting trying to get some interesting shapes for these trees or these I don't even know what they are I don't think they're cypress maybe they are it could be some sort of juniper. One thing I'm concerned with is it uh, having light green in this area. If, I, I don't want to draw the eye to this area too much, but we'll see. I am trying to leave holes in the foliage uh, to you know be able to see through it to the water. So not quite sky holes, they're more like water holes. I don't want the base of these trees to be a straight line. So I'm gonna kind of mess it up a little bit. So I am squinting at the trees just to simplify uh, the shapes. And then again, working quickly and spontaneously and then stepping back periodically to see if I like uh, the shapes that I'm getting. This dark pattern here is really the most important part of the painting. And so I wanna make sure that I get these tree shapes or plant shapes uh, to a place where I'm happy with them before progressing in the painting. I'm using the trees as inspiration, but the priority is getting a good abstract pattern. When I say good, I just mean something that is appealing to me. When I walk back and look at it, I, you know, it's appealing and I like it. It's, it's kind of a it's an instinct or a feeling, and, I, and for all of us, it's different, right? So you gotta learn to trust your own instinct and figure out what it is you actually like. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, I got a mixture of alizarin crimson and uh, ultramarine blue, and I have not thinned this paint at all. There's enough mineral spirits on the canvas that you know once this thick paint touches that uh, mineral spirits that's already on the canvas it kind of thins the paint if i were to thin this paint with mineral spirits or medium it just would be too thin i just took off my sweatshirt i'm actually painting in just a t-shirt out here which is a rare thing by the ocean usually it's uh, pretty cold and windy but for some reason it almost feels like a spring day out here. I'm just gonna put in some of these trunks and then I'm gonna start filling in the other colors. I wanna put in the, all the light background areas before laying in some thicker dark paint. I don't want the dark paint to get into the, the lights so much. 
All right, for the sky, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue, thalo blue, titanium white, and just gonna cover the canvas quickly, and then I will get more specific with the colors. This is just to block in the background and get all of the shapes in place so I can see if it's working or not. I've been having a lot of fun just approaching all of my paintings as play and experimentation as opposed to going in with the expectation that I'm gonna do a good painting, which is what I used to do in the past. And I find that the results are much better when I sort of give myself an assignment or a challenge and then just have fun with it. No expectations other than to, in this case, try to compose this scene in a square format, which like I said, is a challenge for me or has been. There's quite a bit of white water out in this area and I wanna feature that. And I've got the canvas in full light right now, which is a problem but once I've got all the colors blocked in, then I'm gonna turn the canvas so it doesn't have direct light on it so I can judge the values and colors better. So, but for now, during the blocking, it's not really a problem. Squinting at the distant mountains, looking for the shadow shapes. And I'm not really paying attention to value too much right now. I mean, a little bit, I'm approximating values because I know that I wanna keep these distant mountains uh, lighter in value, like keep the contrast low so it's more high key in the background. In other words, these darks are not that dark uh, and that will help push this landmass into the distance. That's the hope, but you really do need to get the whole panel covered or the whole canvas covered before you can tell if your value pattern is working or not, especially on a bright day like this. There's some shadow shapes over here as well. There is actually some warmth on this distant mountain, uh, some bright greens, but I'll probably tone those down to push, uh, to push the mountain back. Uh, this is a composition that I would have avoided in the past, this idea of having some overlap of foreground overlapping the background. I used to prefer a cleaner, simpler composition, so it's kind of fun to challenge myself to do something that's a little more uh, a little more messy maybe, but has the potential to be interesting, hopefully. All right, I've mixed up a mid-value green here using cadmium yellow medium and ultramarine blue and a touch of alizarin crimson as well to warm it up. I will be uh, putting some variation into these greens here. Alizarin crimson mixes the most beautiful greens. It seems like all green has some red in it, Something about a lizard and it just mixes so well with other colors. That's why I love it so much. And the permanent alizarins just are not the same. They're a completely different color. They're a quinacridone color. So those just do not cut it, in my opinion. All right, unfortunately, the sun has gone behind some clouds and we may not get it back but that's okay. That's part of what we love about plein air painting, losing the light. It's just part of the deal. But that's what makes us paint quickly and try to focus on the basics. You know, the basic design. It will make you a better studio painter as well. At least it did for me. I learned so much about simplification uh, from plein air painting. All right, there's some warm colors out on these distant mountains uh, because there was direct light on the mountains. Uh, instead of graying down these warm colors, I'm gonna just lighten the value as much as possible um, because I do want, I want there to be a sense of light out here. And so I think by keeping the contrast uh, fairly delicate here between the lights and the darks and go almost more with like a temperature shift as opposed to a value shift. My hope is that that'll push those mountains back and I think it's working so far. A lot of times I see warmth in the distance and in the past I would just gray it down which would end up killing the light on the distant 
mountain or trees or whatever it was and then it would just wouldn't look like there was light back there it wouldn't look accurate in that way you know and it may have been that the light on the distant mountains or distant trees or whatever is something that i was attracted to so by lightening the value and reducing the contrast you get the best of both worlds you can get your warmth and you get your sense of depth all right i've got titanium white and ultramarine blue and I'm going to establish my lightest lights out here. One thing I notice about these canvases too is that, I'm not sure why, but the lights just do not appear to be as light as when I paint on a, a less absorbent canvas or surface, which I guess makes sense. All right, some pretty big waves rolling in here. Then there's also some white water out at the point. There's some rocks out here too I'll be adding. All right, at the base of the rocks, it's kind of dark. So I'm going with a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. I want some contrast with the white water and I'm feeling like I wasn't getting it. So you know, I'm paying attention to this relationship between the dark portion of the cliffs and the white water and i think i'm gonna have to I, i'm definitely gonna have to darken some of this water here and possibly lighten the sky all right i'm lightening up the sky a little with some thick paint this is titanium white and ultramarine blue and the thickness is you know, straight out of the tube thickness loading up the brush with as much paint as possible using a number eight natural bristle flat there is more saturated blue up in this area, but down lower, it's lighter in value. I'm going through a lot of white paint in this painting already. All right, I've lightened the sky up as much as possible, and now I'm paying attention to the relationship between the shadow portion of these cliffs and the sky, and I've decided that I need to make the shadow portions darker so, because I can't go any lighter with the sky. And that's a little bit more accurate right there. And then I think I'll be able to get the, uh, the trees dark enough so that we still have a sense of depth. All right, reinforcing the light portion of these cliffs or this mountain or whatever it is. Some lighter portions down along the water line as well. All right, so here's what I finished up with. I did not do any touch-ups on this painting, but I do plan to touch up uh, some of the holes in the trees right in here. Uh, maybe darken this section right here. But I do like the sense of depth in this painting. I'm happy with that. I did really struggle uh, with the mountains here or these distant hills because it did not feel like there was sufficient sun on them so i just kept pushing and pushing the warmth i was a little bit afraid that the mountains were going to come forward too much but it looks like it worked out so just again i was really just focused on value relationships to make sure uh, that the mountain or this hill or whatever it is did recede into the distance uh, one thing that i had to do to get uh, higher value was just mop on the paint in the foreground here like in the water and there's maybe a little bit too much texture in the water for my liking because texture will also uh, move forward in the picture plane and I wanted to push back the water in particular out here there is more texture up close so I think it actually I think it might work I'm just gonna live with it for a while I did darken the value of the grass in here. There was a lot of light on this sort of grass or whatever these plants were here, but I didn't want to draw too much attention so that the eye just passes over this into the distance. And I just sort of built this up with directional strokes. I actually like the way that came out. Mission accomplished. I think there's a sense of depth here. And actually, I like this painting. And this is a kind of composition I wouldn't have done in the past. I did experiment in a previous video on a smaller format and to my surprise it worked out and what I mean is having some heavy presence in the foreground that's almost blocking the view in a way to the background 
I, I just would not have done that. And so I experimented, like I said in a previous video, on an 11 by 14. And I, to my surprise, I really liked it and had wanted to go back and do a larger version. And I thought this could be a good experiment. And, uh, and yeah, I'm actually pleased with the way it came out. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video.